In this video, I'm going to be repairing this 13 inch early 2011 Apple MacBook Pro. Now, I actually got this machine uh, quite some time ago uh, as a trade from somebody. And um, yeah, as you can see, it appears to be working perfectly fine. The system is running, uh, it runs fast like it should. However, it does have a few minor problems. Um, those being one of the RAM slots is bad, the lower one that uh, commonly fails in these 13 inch machines. Uh, the SD card slot doesn't work and the ethernet port doesn't work. Now I think those are just small logic board problems. Um, I believe this board was water damaged at one point so that's more than likely the root cause of these issues. Um, so if we go into ethernet cards you can see that it says this computer does not appear to have any uh, ethernet cards installed and same thing for when we go down to uh, where is it? Card readers is somewhere here. There it is. And you can see that it says this computer doesn't contain any Apple internal memory card readers. So um, there's probably just some sort of power problem uh, for both of these uh, devices for the Ethernet controller and the uh, SD card controller. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the machine down, take out the logic board, and we'll begin to do some testing and figure out uh, what the problem is with those uh, devices on the logic board. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down and resume the video once I get the logic board removed. All right, as you can see, I've gotten the board removed and we are ready to begin testing. So I've got, uh, gone ahead and opened the schematic and looked around a little bit. And um, as you can see here, there is a 3.3 volt e Ethernet rail, which I assume means Ethernet. and that is the first thing I'm going to check here. So if we look for, so you can see that the rail's there. Now if we go ahead and look at the board view here, and um, I clicked on one of the pins on the SD card connector, and you can see that is J3500. So if we go ahead and search for J3500 in the schematic here, you can see uh, that the connector is right there. And if we look at the uh, power rails going into it here, Look at that, you can see ENET is on all of these rails. So that means that whatever rails the Ethernet controller uses, and we can also figure that out by looking at the schematic, clicking on the Ethernet port here, and that is J4000. So we'll go ahead and look that up. And you can see that J4000, the Ethernet connector is right here. And you can see that we've got some ENET uh, pins going into that as well. So first off, we'll go ahead and check for the ENET power rail. So let's go back uh, to that. And there it is right here. And you can see it is PP3V3 underscore ENET. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just highlight this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and search for that in the schematic and see, or in the board view, and see where that should show up on the board. So you can see that it shows up a lot in this area over here, um, and some of these pins, go ahead and switch it over to the top here, and see what else we've got here. All right, so you can see it shows up in quite a few areas right here. So what I'll go ahead and do is just try to find uh, one of the components where that rail should show up. For example, C7922. And we'll go ahead and measure that and see if we're getting the proper 3.3 uh, volts there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera in a tripod and we'll go ahead and check that rail. So I'll be right back. All right, so you can see that I've gotten my multimeter out and we are now ready to check that voltage. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is just plug the board in, get it to turn on here. All right, so you can see the board is now running. And now we will check the voltage uh, on a point of the board where PP3V3 underscore ENET should show up. So let me go ahead and do that real fast here. Let's see, it should show up right there. All right, and as you can see, we are getting the proper voltage there. Um, so now all we have to do is just check some of the data pins and uh, see if that might be causing the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the board here. And uh, we'll go ahead and back over to the schematic and start checking some continuity. So I'll be right back. 
Alright, so after looking around in the schematic and doing some testing for quite a bit, uh, I could not find anything obviously wrong. So what I'm going to end up doing now is I'm just going to take uh, this chip off. This is actually a different board. I'm going to take this probably good chip off of this board. And uh, this board, of course, is bad, so I'm not going to like just take it off of a good board. Uh, but uh, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to solder it on the other board. Now, based on the schematic, I realized that this chip, this Broadcom Ethernet controller, is also the controller for the SD card reader. So that would make sense that if this was bad, then neither of those two devices would work. And that is indeed the case. And as I showed you in the system, uh, it does not detect either the Ethernet controller nor the SD card controller. So more than likely, this chip is bad. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this good chip from this board and replace the chip on the 2011 board. So I'm going to go ahead and place the camera in a tripod and uh, begin removing the chip. So I'll be right back. Alright, so I've placed the uh, camera in a tripod as you can see. So the first thing of course to do is to apply some flux to this chip before we go ahead and remove it here. All right, and now that we've gotten some flux applied, I'm gonna go ahead and take my hot air gun here, and I'm going to remove the chip. Some low air here. Alright, so you can see I've now removed the uh, chip that we're going to put on the other board, uh, presumably the good chip. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is get the other board out, uh, the 2011 board, and remove the chip on that one. Yep, it's right there. So of course we're just going to uh, go with the same process as before. We're going to apply some flux to it. And uh, then we're just going to go ahead and heat it up and remove it. Alright, so as you can see we have gotten the chip off, so now what we're going to do is just solder the new chip on. There we go, that should be aligned. So now we'll go ahead and heat it up.
All right, so that looks like it's on. So now we'll just go ahead and let that cool down and we'll go ahead and hook the board back up and check to see if there is now a ethernet controller and SD card reader controller present. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the casing and once I'm done, I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I've now reassembled the machine and, or partially reassembled it, just enough to test it. So uh, as you can see, I've already booted it up here. So now we're gonna go ahead and check system profiler and see if the memory or if the uh, SD card reader and uh, ethernet are showing up in here. So first off, we'll go ahead and check card reader and look at that. Now we have a built-in SD card reader showing up. Let's go down to ethernet here, wherever that is, ethernet cards. And we also have an ethernet controller showing. So uh, now I'll go ahead and quit out of that. Uh, I've got an SD card down here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and plug that in and see if it detects it. And look at that. We've got an SD card showing up. Detects the full 8 gigs of it. And uh, let's see what should detect it. Yep, it looks like it has successfully detected the SD card. Let's go ahead and eject that. And uh, now what I'll go ahead and do is I will go ahead and hook this up to Ethernet, test it, and make sure the Ethernet is working correctly. All right, so as you can see, I've got uh, the network preferences up here, and it is detecting the Ethernet card, so that's good. So now what I'll go ahead and do is plug in the Ethernet and see if it connects. Let's see. It says it's in an unknown state right now, so let me hit apply. And look at that, it has now connected. So let's go ahead and open up Safari here. And the time's wrong, but let's see if uh, it loads the page. And it does. And it just shows it like this because the time is wrong, but uh, it is correctly loading the page. and. Um, yeah, now Ethernet and the SD card reader are working on this machine. So, that has been re the repair of this early 2011 13-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Um, hope you enjoyed this video.